Holiday out to Horford. Horford a three. Bang! Al Horford from downtown. And Celtics back up by eight. Timeout Phoenix. Welcome to Celtics post game live scout. Chris Forsberg, Amina Smith here with you. The Celtics defeat the Phoenix Suns 117 107 to get back in the win column. Forsberg, we talked about how important it was for the Celtics to get the win tonight in Phoenix. Your biggest takeaway after this game? Yeah, so like, look, Phoenix made a bunch of different charges. Kevin Durant was giving it to you for much of that second half, and you find a way to sort of stiff arm him at every charge. I love that Al makes that three after a cold night shooting the basketball, impacted in other ways, but. Uh, you know, some of these, I always complain that it feels like sometimes they get into the, to the clutch criteria and you're like, eh, I don't know if that was a clutch game. They did have to kind of dig in at times to get to the finish line here. So could be a little bit more crisp, could have kept it at 12, pushed that lead up, but you found a way to get to the finish line. For me, it, I, you know, I'm still sour about the Denver game, right? So, and I know we're supposed to move on, but... Joe Mazzulla calling timeouts when he needed to. The Boston Celtics executing when they need to. So, so they clearly can do it. That's okay. So you had the flare screen dive to the Al Horford three. You had all the action to begin with. Then you had the Tatum isolation at the end of the play, not dribbling the ball down and waiting 16 seconds. So it are. Are we expecting them to execute moving forward, or are we expecting them just to keep playing random or play ISO or walk the, uh, walk the ball up the floor? So I, I like what I saw. It proves to be that either A, they're hearing it, or B, they're like, okay, we're not going to just let it up to chance. We need to control outcomes a lot better. I do believe in Joe Mazzulla. I do believe that he can do that. But, but today was a great example of what this team can be mm. in a cl- – we don't have to call it clutch. In a tight game situation, sure. they, they pushed all the right buttons like a championship team would. Let's take a closer look at the Celtics executing down the stretch, starting with that Al Horford three in the fourth quarter as this game wound down. Forsberg, what did you like about what you saw in the final moments of love, this game? Love Drew Holiday slipping this and just finding Al. Al having the confidence to take that shot despite being cold for much of the night. But like Scal said, you got, all right, you got everyone's eyes are on Tatum. No, but see, that happened after six passes. That right. was against the clock. Mm-hmm. After they moved the ball, Tatum with a live dribble. That's a different animal than him dribbling the ball up the court, everyone keying in on him, and all of a sudden he goes to work. That was different. So that should be the formula. A little bit of action, and that is the benefit of having a guy that can get you a bucket. Because mm. you can run all this action. The defense is a little bit hugged up. The clock is running down. Tatum is a beast. That's when you use your talent. And you saw the spacing on the floor. It looked a lot different than when he's pounding the ball for those for those 13, 14, 15 seconds. So who does that fall on? Is that Joe Mazzula that draws up a play for his guys Today, down the stretch? Or is that, you know, you're talking about executing, does that fall on the players? Like, is that more so something drawn up for them or something they figure out on their, on their own? Yeah, so... Today, they ran action. Gotcha. So, in the past, they've ran, um, you know, spacing plays. You know, Tatum's here. You're going to be here, 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 and here. Today, it was, we're going to run an action. And guess what? Tatum had the ball on both those plays. If Drew Holiday would have slipped and, you know, the Phoenix Suns would have played that the right way, then Tatum would have a chance to go to work. But at least it's off of something, right? So, in this game, they called timeout, set up plays, during reviews, set up plays, and executed down the stretch. Doesn't mean every shot's going to go in. That Al Horford shot, they could have missed that shot. Mm. But it was based off of this is how we're going to play. So if you ask me what the Celtics' identity is, I don't know. Is it the Phoenix Sun game where we're executing, or is it the Denver Nugget game or the Cav game? I couldn't tell you right now, which I hope by the time playoffs roll around, I think I have an answer. And that's what I'm thinking for. Is like maybe they're working out the kinks right now so that when you get down the stretch of the regular season, getting into the postseason, you know what to do in those moments. One of the things that I keep thinking about all week is it's so weird. Like The Celtics out of timeouts, Joe Missoula's ATOs are some of the most points per play in the NBA. And yet... He has tried to get away with letting his team run their own action and, 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 and not calling a play and not calling that timeout. I know he does it. I know because he wants to stress his team and make them better in those situations. But when you're that good at being able to draw up something, to just reaffirm, like, here's what we want to run, here's the secondary action, like, you just give them a little advice. We want to go at this point. 
it feels like they execute so crisply. So maybe there's a balance there. Maybe they can learn a little bit from that Denver game, like where they need to be and how they need to run and combine that with the just being too slow in, in Cleveland. Maybe they can learn from that. But I will be interested. Like, does this carry over to multiple games moving mm -hmm. forward? Or was this just a reaction to a bad week? Well, hopefully it does carry on to games moving forward. All right, let's switch gears and send it out to Abby Chin, who caught up with Luke Cornett after the win. Luke, congratulations. You guys bounced back after those two losses. What did the mindset have to be, and what did you like about the way you guys played? Uh, I mean, I think we just competed at a high level. I think we were pretty locked in, especially, uh, I mean, just like executing offensively and trying to get great shots. and. Uh, it's not always going to look a certain type of way, but I feel like we just kind of persevered through it. For you, the Cornette contest was a perfect three for three, but you also got your 500th field goal and oh, a career high in five, a career high five dunks. Yeah, oh, even yeah. better. Uh, how are you able to use your size? Yeah, yeah, no. The eclipse was built for the sun. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so there's something there, obviously. Uh, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, guys just found me. They were kind of playing up, and so just trying to get behind the defense and. Had some great passes from guys and uh, career high five dunks. You know, I don't know. I have nothing to say anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I think you said it all. If the eclipse was made yeah. for the sun. Yeah, yeah, no, the, yeah, eclipse and the suns. It was, it was built for today. Hand in hand. Yeah. Um, offensively, though, what were you guys able to get back to and finding that execution? Uh, yeah, I think uh, we did a good job of just playing with a lot of pace and a lot of force. I feel like that was the biggest thing, especially in the first half. I feel like. Um, we just played very freely and with a lot of speed and very aggressive and kind of just made the right reads from there. And uh, I think we kind of approached it with just that everyone aggressive, everyone uh, able to make plays and stuff. Uh, I, especially the first half, we're just a dangerous team. And playing with that energy is kind of contagious, and I think it carries over to defense as well. For you, and I know with Chris Stops out, but did you know that you were going to get the big minutes tonight? And, and what was your plan coming in? Um, I, I didn't really, but I was ready. Um, I mean, yeah, it's kind of just the, the name of the game. And uh, yeah, obviously, find out KP's out, you kind of know there's more opportunity. But um, and we have the luxury of having, whether it's like me or Xavier or O'Shea, just kind of based on the game and the matchup. And fortunately, I was able to provide us some energy today. And um, I'll be ready for the next time. Right. Congratulations. The, the, yeah. Did you do the no, no, no on purpose, or was it just a one? I, I think you just hung after one of the dunks. Oh. And then you tapped your head, too. Yeah, I did tap the head. The that's celebration's a, feeling I, it. Yeah, that's uh, I think it's pretty popular these. Well, I don't know if these days, maybe like last year, two years ago, more <laughs> so. But I was feeling a certain type of way. I was feeling a lot of energy and probably a lot of testosterone or something. And I was just very revved up. Adrenaline is what I was looking for. Maybe both. I don't know. You can feel it, Luke. Congratulations. Yeah. You killed it. Thanks. <laughs> Captain Charisma, Luke Cornett, he's so funny without even trying to be funny. Yeah, like, he's was blowing. Funny. He is unintentionally funny. <laughs> even the funny, way right? he ran away like a little kid. <laughs> unintentionally funny. Unintentionally funny. I look